Uh, I'm Rose Hilbrand. Many of you know me. Some of you don't. Some of you may have read about me in the book. And some of you may be in a similar position to where I was five years ago before I learned about Bank on Yourself. And I'm sorry for reading, but um, I wrote all this down so I don't get lost and forget what I want to say. <laughs> for those of you who have read the book, I don't want to repeat myself, so I'm going to tell a little bit different part of the story, um, the backstory, if you will, and how I met John Schedenhelm and started using the Bank on Yourself concept. Um, hopefully some of you will relate to my story and maybe some of you will find some hope in it for yourselves. I was raised on a farm with three siblings. My parents worked very hard to support us and I don't think any of us ever felt any lack or deprivation or anything like that. But money was always pretty scarce. My father opened a savings account for me when I was 10 years old and I would sock away any gifts I got over the years for birthdays and things like that, saving for things I really wanted. And that was about the extent of my financial education. <laughs> I don't remember any of my classes in school or college even touching on the topic, and I'm sure many of you have had a similar experience. I did have some scholarships, and I made it through college okay with very little debt. Shortly before graduation, I got my first credit card, and there the trouble kind of began for me. <laughs> At first, I was pretty careful to pay things off. But when I went to graduate school, financial aid for my program was pretty scarce, and I started using my credit cards a lot more and not paying them off. And it was during this time that I also learned about the stock market, and I thought it was really fascinating. Um, this was during the dot-com boom time. Um, the idea of compounding interest or investing in something that would just grow all by itself was just such an amazing concept to me. Of course, I didn't have any money to invest at the time, <laughs> but I did a lot of study, and I thought it was really interesting. When I got out of grad school, I probably had a total of about $15,000 of student loans and probably about that much in credit cards, too. I did get a decent paying entry level job at the University of Houston, and I tried my hand at a little bit of investing in the market, just kind of dabbling, playing, really. Um, I also started contributing to the 403B plan that was offered by my employer, and I was paying down my credit cards. But since I had a good job, I kind of didn't really see it as a huge priority to get them all paid off. So when I did move to Ohio a couple years later, I brought a pretty substantial amount of debt with me, along with a 13-year-old car that was just beginning to have some pretty major issues, as some of my friends t here, here today can attest to. <laughs> I pursued my hobby of the previous few years, and I started teaching at a local dance studio. But business was pretty slow, and money was even slower. I managed to pay the rent on my little apartment, but the credit card debt began to grow again and car repairs and unexpected medical expenses added to the burden of that. And that's kind of the situation I was in when I first heard about Bank on Yourself. And it was just a little over five years ago that I stumbled across the concept on the internet. And I don't even really remember how or where. I don't know what website I was on. I don't know what I was looking for. I just remember that I ended up with a copy of one of Pamela Yellen's reports. And I think it was the one about using the concept to finance cars. And I read it through and I was really skeptical. But at the same time, I remember thinking, wow, this makes so much sense. How come everybody isn't doing this? It just kind of felt like the missing piece of the financial picture that nobody had ever told me about. But like I said, I was really skeptical. And anyway, I thought, where would I ever get the money to start this thing? So even though it seemed interesting, it really seemed pretty impossible to me at the time. So I kind of pushed it aside, forgot about it for a little while. And things kind of continued to really not get any better. I started to get pretty desperate. I felt like things couldn't go on like they were, but I didn't really know how to make a change. I applied for some other jobs, but not really with much luck. And of course, I did a lot of praying. <laughs> one day, I got one of Pamela's newsletters, uh, email newsletters in my inbox, and I read it, and I thought, what was this about again? <laughs> and so I dug out the report, and I reread it, and there was a form at the end, and I filled it out to request an appointment. And I thought, hey, it's free, right? You know, can't go too wrong. Maybe somebody can at least give me some guidance or some help of some sort. A couple days later, a nice lady named Rita, and she's in the back, back there, hi, Rita. <laughs> she called me and scheduled an appointment for me. At, the, at that time, my car was not capable of making it over to Gehanna, so <laughs> we set up an appointment at a local restaurant down the street from where I lived at the time. That first appointment was a lesson in humility for me, definitely. I remember walking in and seeing this serious professional looking guy in a tie waiting for me at the table and I just wanted to turn around and run away. <laughs> and I am so happy I did not. <laughs> As requested, I brought my financial information with me. I just had making, made some notes on balances, interest rates on my debt, payments on my loans, credit cards, and 
my really small income records, statements of the little investment accounts I still had. And I have rarely felt so mortified as I did having to lay out my financial life on the table in front of a total stranger. But he didn't seem shocked. And to my surprise, he didn't scold me, which I realized I had sort of expected. <laughs> but I thought, man, he must be thinking I am such a total and complete waste of his time. But we talked, and he took some notes and gave me a book to read, which is Becoming Your Own Banker by Nelson Nash. Um, some of you probably have read it. And we scheduled another appointment for the next week. And I went home still really skeptical, but maybe with a little glimmer of hope. And many times that week, I considered canceling the appointment. But I figured that he would not have set up a second appointment if he felt there was no hope for me. <laughs> so I went ahead and read the book. Um, it presented a really different way of looking at money from anything I'd ever heard of. And it was really hard for me to wrap my mind around it. But it was very intriguing, and it did make me feel a little more hopeful that maybe there was a better way. On our second appointment, John presented some ideas to me and also told me I needed to increase my income right away. Well, kind of knew that, but it gave me the impetus to do it. <laughs> And my second lesson in humility was taking a job at a local fast food restaurant at the, for the first time in my life at the age of 28. The manager looked at me really strangely and he declared me, quote, ridiculously overqualified. <laughs> but they hired me. I worked there for three months. I would get up at 5 a.m., drive to work in my freezing cold falling apart car, help open the restaurant, sweep the snow out of the parking lot, pick up trash, and clean the grease traps, among other things. After the lunch rush, I would hurry to the dance studio, change out of my greasy uniform in the bathroom, and teach until 9 p.m. Some days on, I was on my feet for about 15 hours or so. This was perhaps the hardest three months of my life in some ways. But looking back, I wouldn't trade it for anything. That experience taught me that it is truly possible to turn your life around if you're willing to do what it takes and take a chance on something new. In the meantime, I met with John several more times. To my surprise, he didn't think I should wait to start the process, and he showed me how I could start right away using that old 403B plan that I had pretty much forgotten about. That was another big challenge for me, to cash out what I had been taught by everyone would someday be my retirement. I struggled with that a little bit, but since the plan had only grown by about $200 that year, I figured it probably wouldn't be much of a retirement anyway. <laughs> So I did it, and for me, as, for well, as well as for some of you who have gone through the process, it felt like a huge leap of faith for me. I can't tell you all the thoughts that went through my head during that process. What if this is a scam? What if this guy takes all the little bit of money I have left and runs? What if it doesn't work? What it, and why have I never heard of it before if it does? And if, even if it does, can it really make that much of a difference for me when I don't even really understand it? Sorry here. But leap, I did. And once the final paperwork was done, I never looked back. And of course, it didn't hurt that I went to work for John two months later. <laughs> Got to understand it a little bit better. <laughs> the people at the restaurant didn't even blink when I turned in my two weeks notice. And the rest, as they say, is history, at least if you read the book. If you haven't, there's plenty of copies back there. I would like, however, before I close, to fast forward to present day, just for a moment, and give you a little update, because the interview in the book was done over a year ago now. Last July, I purchased a low-mileage, two-year-old, cute little red Scion using a loan from my bank on yourself policy. This was the first car that I've paid for entirely using my policy. I love, love, love my cute little car. And those of you who have been able to pay cash for a car can attest to how easy it is. Minimal paperwork, easy negotiations, I have my title within a week. But the best part is paying myself back. And knowing I'll be able to do this every time I buy a car for the rest of my life, even if I never started another policy and just kept that same little one I started with originally. I did, however, start a second policy last April, about twice the size of the first one, and it's doing quite well, though I haven't borrowed for that, from that one yet. Next Thursday, I am leaving to spend 10 days on the coast of Croatia, which is the most beautiful place on Earth, I, at least in my opinion. If you've ever been there, you probably agree, and if you haven't, I highly recommend it. This much-needed vacation was paid for, of course, with a loan from my first Bank on Yourself plan. If I wanted to, I could vacation in Croatia every year for the rest of my life. I like variety, so I probably won't, but you never know. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.